Wagwan well, Lung Gang, you've been waiting for this one. How difficult was paper two actually? Let's go question by question. And guys, I'm gonna be completely real with you because this video might actually determine how much harder you need to work for paper three. So let's start from question one. Question one, super easy. Differentiating cubic twice into a linear function, then making it negative for concavity, basic. Question two, simple. Subbing in n is one, two, three for part A. Part B, periodic, meaning repetition of sequences every four terms, implying the first term is the same as the fifth, which was part I. Then the sum of 25 terms. You only need to work out how many groups of four make up 25, which would be six, then an extra term at the end. Nice. Question three, very easy. Bring the two log x to the left side, collect the logs using your log rules, then two to the power of both sides, get rid of denominators and rearrange. Solve the quadratic, then for the last part, just can't have any negative x values because you can't log negatives. Easy. Question four was very, very, very easy. Sub in t is zero to find a. Differentiate the function, which was e, by the way, the easiest thing to differentiate. You had to set the derivative to be negative as it was cooling when t is zero to find b. Question five, joke ting. Sub in your coordinates into the derivative, equate to zero to find k. Integrate the whole thing, sub in your coordinates of p to find your constant of integration, which is in fact where it intersects the y-axis. Question six, many students will be baffed at this question, but I did a question pretty much exactly the same with my year 12s last week. You're dealing with 2D vectors. You can plot it on an xy-axis for your visuals. Part A, super easy. You subtract the vectors, show their multiples of each other. Part B, you just find the distances between all the vertices using Pythagoras, find the perimeter, times it by two for the total distance, convert from minutes to hours and divide. Question seven, if you've been watching my videos, you know this implicit equation is easy. They didn't even give you any exponentials to differentiate. Just sub in the coordinates for part B, then y minus y1 formula, nice. Question eight, are transformations so easy? I showed you guys my tricks to doing this in like seconds. Part B, I've actually done quite a few questions like this with my year 13s, but you're just using a plus m minus one d, with d being sine x and the first term being cos x. You do the transformation and read the coefficient for the maximum, nice. Question nine, I was surprised at this parametric question. No integration with parametrics is a big shame. Obviously, I did that on my stream. I did a very hard one, in fact. In this question, they just asked you to convert to Cartesian, and then they asked again to find a tangent, which is quite surprising for edXL to do two tangent questions in one paper. They're just being a bit lazy. To find the Cartesian equation was pretty standard. You have to rearrange for t by completing the square. Again, something I've shown you guys many, many, many times. Overall, quite a mid question. Question 10. I haven't actually seen a question on partial fractions with an unknown constant in the numerator, but regardless, the process is the same. A very easy partial fractions. Then integrating is all about the lun lun lun. Let's go. Sub in your limits. Then they were nice enough to make you get lun of one in both substitutions, which equals zero. Edexcel being nice, man. Nice. Question 11. This is where the paper starts to get interesting. A bit of one got need in that. But really, guys, I did pretty much the exact same question on TikTok recently. You know, that dude standing in the bathtub. Then separation of variables, which was super simple. Sub in some values to find A and B and then done. This is one of the questions you do at the beginning of differential equations because it's so simple. Question 12. This is a standard modulus graphs question, kind of disguised by using the streaming companies as an example. Part A, you're just subbing in T is zero, then subtracting. Part B is finding the value of T at the vertex, which I showed you guys how to do on my live stream on Monday. Just make what's inside the modulus equal to zero. Part C, you solve, you label each line, solve for X where they equal each other, then the solutions were the endpoints. Again, I showed you guys how to solve modulus functions in my stream. Question 13, part A is a standard binomial expansion. Part B, you had six X, you had to bring up the denominator, then use part A to expand and then integrate your terms. Part C though, perhaps will have stunned a few students. There are two ways you could have integrated such an expression. You could have used parts or by substitution. Since they left it up to you to complete, I would say this is about a four out of five on my difficulty scale. Nothing I've said so far though, is more than a three out of five. Question 14, a lot of you were talking about this one. At first glance, it looks mad, but you had to notice one plus tan squared is sex squared then you multiply through by cos squared. Then on the left side, you're left with two sine cos, which is sine two theta. Then you move everything over to the left side and factorize, done. What makes this really hard is they don't tell you what A, B, and C are. So usually what examiners do is they make you show what the equation is, which you can then use in part B. So this was actually quite cruel from Edexcel. 
could still have picked up marks though by letting sine 2 theta equal zero and solving that. It's just the cos quadratic you wouldn't have been able to solve if you couldn't do part A. So this question I would say was pretty tough, but still a four out of five expected. The last question, question 15. I did one of these very similar in my free stream. Although this one was pretty weird in terms of the way the student was going about it. I don't know why they squared it. The better way in my opinion to form the contradiction is to factorize out cos x. But anyway, you had to expand the brackets and prove using the obtuse angle fact that the inequality gets violated based on those conditions. I would say on the whole, it isn't a tough question, but it's something that hasn't been asked before. So I would say this is still a four out of five in terms of difficulty. But guys, as you can see, my evaluation is that it wasn't actually a crazy tough paper. Just because some questions you haven't seen before does not make it tough. The questions asked were really standard. The gray boundaries are not going to be lowered and we're not counting COVID years. It's probably gonna be pretty similar to 2019 where 55% was an A. But in my prediction, that will probably go up based on the first two papers, maybe 60% for an A, but that's not guaranteed. But the main thing you need to know is that it was a standard paper. Gray boundaries are not going down. Now listen up, Lung Gang. I've always got your back. On to the more important stuff. We need to be focused on paper three. I'm a man of my word. So like I said in my paper two stream, if you get this channel to 7.5K subs, then I'll go through a couple of applied questions with you the night before your exam live on stream, just like I did with Pure. Nice. But you guys have shown mad love. It's been crazy. We're already at 7.3K subs, so 7.5K seems like light work. So here's a new challenge for you. If you get this YouTube channel to 10K before the 19th, then I'll do a Lung Gang special of a 12 hour long stream covering a mad enormous amount of papers so that we cover every single question needed to pattern your A star. So blow this up, share this with your friends. Lung Gang on top for real.